everybody has a dream. And mine was to have my family. And mine started when I met Daniel. We dated, got engaged, and got married. And when I finally had fulfilled my dream, was the beginning of my biggest nightmare. I started to have a lot of stomach ache, a lot of heartburn, feeling very bad. And at that same year, I been to a checkup and was everything good, all the exams, but I started with that symptoms out of nowhere. Because of the pain that she was feeling constantly, we started, you know, going more regularly to the doctor. Because she was feeling pain, we would go, they would give medicine and would go back home. Exams and exams and came the diagnosis, the final one. The doctor said, you have cancer was a very aggressive one and the doctor read to me the diagnosis look you have a cancer a very aggressive one in a matter of hours can double in size he has metastasis and cannot give you a big hope he told me so much so that every time you know, we were hoping for some good news, something worse even came up. And despite the doctors being really good and that we had all their help, but it's something that not even the doctors, you know, had condition to solve. And that cancer was spreading in an astonishing way to the point that when the doctor saw her, he said, look, there's no way out. We have to keep you in today. With all that situation, with all that evil pressure, was like God had forsake me in that moment that I needed the most. But I remember there I tied up and ignored that voice of feeling that was so strong. And I told God, God, talk to me. I need to hear you, Lord. I'm not understanding anything, the reason why. But I don't want to understand why. I want you, Lord, to give me one word. And God spoke to me in that moment. I remember the vow that I did with God in the past. And I promised him. I did the covenant with him. When I had my encounter with God, I made a covenant with him, a covenant of blood, of life, that I promised him that everything I was going to suffer for the love of him. And I stopped to see myself as the poor thing, like the wronged one. In the moment, God told me that sickness was not to my death, but to the glory of God. For me to be here today, testifying that, because it was very hard at that time. Evil came on me to stop my fate, but I remember this vow. This vow. When I saw Priscilla in that situation, totally weakened, you know, there was no other way out than the altar. I said, it's all for all. My God, the altar will give my wife a new life. Everything got even worse. Because with many complications, I was using chest drain and that made me feel terrible pains. Was at the worst case scenario. But inside of me, I knew God was going to honor. We saw the campaign of Israel as an opportunity not to buy the miracle, but to prove to God our faith through our surrender. Because the campaign of Israel, it's not the buying of a miracle. It's for us to show our trust with attitudes. That's what we did. I was there, still in the hospital bed. But my husband went there and got all that we had. Took the floor off our feet. 
For me, that was the greatest opportunity of my life because I said, now I will take my wife from this situation. And I remember that we were in a very tight pos position because of everything that was going on. And it was quite funny even if I, if I can say it like this, because I would get home and I would look at any object there and God would tell me, look, are you going to accept your wife to die? I want this. And I would find a way to sell that thing. And that's how we were generating our sacrifice. Every single day in that week, I was generating a part of my sacrifice and placing on the altar. Even her mom that lived away abroad, she gave some gifts to us. And I remember that she brought me a really nice watch. And I didn't even take it out of the plastic. God said, are you going to go with this watch to your wife's burial? Or are you going to put it here on the altar so I can take her out of that situation? And everything that God was asking, we were giving. We generated there an amount that, humanly speaking, we had no condition to do so. But our revolt was so great that I said, no, it's life or death. I said, I am going to climb the altar and by faith you will climb together with me. And I told him, by faith, I will also climb. But I was there in a hospital bed, but he climbed the altar with our vow. And it was a, such a strong experience that in that very same day, it's like I already saw myself healed. There was a therapist that I remember, she was going there to give Priscilla some exercises. And sometimes, even though Priscilla was weak, she always had a word to give to her. She said, no, I came here to help you, and you are the one helping me. And the answer was immediately. As I said, it started inside of us. Inside of us, we already started to have that assurance, that strength, that faith, because all we've been through, nothing, I say, was because of my human strength. No, my human strength was done when I got the news. But and then came the strength of the Holy Spirit, the strength of this vow. was all very fast. On the day after, I was still with the drain, draining. was an awful pain. The liquid that was there draining was finished in the exams. The air that was inside of my lung was gone. That liquid was just gone, gone. When was made the exam called PET scan, wasn't there, was gone, was no longer spread, was nowhere. The sickness was going away and was proven. That was not the treatment, was not the medication, was God was the fate. The doctor came to me and with the eyes full of tears and he said, Priscilla, I never saw that. I can only tell you that this in your life was the hand of God. And I was getting better, gaining weight, every week gaining more weight, feeling stronger and healthier until a moment that I got completely healed. God gave me new hair, much better than the one I had before. No, isn't a wig. Before, I already was full of white hair. And God gave me a new one, real black one. God has done the work complete. Complete. It was extraordinary the way he acted. When I look at Priscilla today, what I'm able to see is the God's image. Because Priscilla was there almost dead, I can clearly say so, because she literally came back to life. What made me strong in this battle was not my own strength. What made me capable was the strength of this vow, the vow that I did in the past with God. When I gave my life to Him and I said, God, I will suffer all for your love's sake. Doesn't matter. It's not to accept the problem. It's to believe. It's to trust until the last minute. 